All right, Pocket. Come say hi. You okay? You're so sweet. Okay, I'm going to bring you back. <laughs> I love you. I just annoyed the shit out of her, but I, I wanted you guys to meet Pocket, um, our friend Eric's cat, who we've been watching for a while now. We call her Pickles. So in this video here on the second channel, hello, um, I want to talk about kind of the books that have really made a big impact on the way I think about the world. I'm a 25 year old dude. Probably like my most passionate pursuit in life is like the pursuit of figuring myself out such that I can really enjoy life. And these books have all kind of triggered a large scale realization in my mind and has like actually changed the way I live on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is gonna be an overview. There's like maybe less than 10 books. Just gonna give a brief summary, talk about what it did for my mind, and hopefully this inspires you to pick up some of these books to help you on your journey. And let's get right into it. Okay, in no particular order, this is actually the most recent book I've read that definitely takes a spot in my essential reading list, my life-changing reading list, and it is The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. This is a book that helped me accept that I am a creative person. It helped me accept that my creativity doesn't have to look any particular way. It helped me understand that I was in love with journaling and writing. It helped me understand that I love creating YouTube videos because it's just something I naturally love to do. It helped me dig into my own heart and ask myself, what do I want to say? What do I want to express in my art? It helped me reframe my career from content creator to artist with this like spiritual backbone. It's like my interest in creativity thanks to this book is like spiritually backed. I believe it's significant. I believe I'm meant to be creative as my career. Yeah, it's really helped me lean into the joy that I am able to access through my creativity and it's really set me free in my, uh, in my creative career here on YouTube and the second channel is a big example of that because I really just, I express myself honestly, which is something I love to do. And that's just a gist of why The Artist's Way was important to me. That's the most direct reason it set me free in my creativity, made me more confident in my career and in my direction to be an artist. Like, I feel... I feel solid that that's my purpose, which is huge because until this point, I was very anxious about my career path, whether I was making the right decision, whether I should get a job that was more secure and made more money. This book helped me accept myself, accept that I want to be an artist, which is huge. But it, it also like articulated just some, some really important spiritual lessons for me, such as like the importance of having fun, the importance of uh, kind of letting go of outer expectations and, and rather coming in and listening to yourself and doing what your intuition wants you to do. Yeah, I care a lot about having a joyous, fulfilling life and the artist way helped me get there on kind of a career and spiritual plane. If you haven't heard of this book, it, it actually takes the form of a 12 week workshop where you do morning pages, which is journaling every morning. You, you take yourself on artist dates, which is where you do something by yourself that's creative and fun once a week. It asks you a lot of questions so you can uncover your blocks and figure out like what brings you joy. Beautiful. Highly recommend. Okay, next book is Why Buddhism is True by Robert Wright. I would hold it up, but I think a friend is borrowing that book from me right now. This book, actually recommended to me by one of my ex-girlfriends, was the first book that gave me consciousness of my own anxiety. I think I was about a freshman or sophomore in college, and I was an anxious person, but I almost didn't even know it. Like, when I had anxiety, it was me. Like, I was anxious, you know? Why Buddhism is True gave me the perspective that anxiety is an evolutionary survival response that is not necessary in the modern day and age, yet it consumes us because it's built into our biology. That was a pretty mind-blowing perspective because, first of all, it pushed me on the track towards Buddhism, which has been a, a, an incredible force in my life for achieving calmness, peace, joy, fulfillment. Hearing that perspective about anxiety for the first time gave me that that kind of higher plane of consciousness where I can actually observe that I was experiencing anxiety, which is one of the most powerful things that the human brain can do. That that simple act of instead of being engrossed by your anxiety and like f literally freaking out about the feeling that you're experiencing, you watch yourself feeling this powerful feeling. That's when I started being able to locate anxiety in my body and really inquire about the things I was feeling. So why Buddhism is true really got me excited about 
things like meditation, Buddhism. I would then apply that plane of consciousness to a lot of things and problems and sufferings that I was experiencing in life, such as career stress, relationship problems, social anxieties. I would apply that observational thing. And this book really, you know, it gave me that skill and it kicked off this grander journey of like really accepting myself because I was able to observe myself and what I was feeling and begin to move towards accepting all that instead of kind of actively resisting it and being in the thick of it. Next book is Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. So this is the book that first got me into stoicism and it had a really big impact impact on me because I just broke my foot. This was a couple years ago. I broke my foot skateboarding. I saw this like depression in front of me, you know, this, uh, I was ready to wallow in my suffering and my inability to skateboard and I was ready to be miserable. But I, I happened to be reading this book and one of the mindsets in this book is a radical acceptance of the present. And this is kind of, this is a little bit of a, a Venn diagram overlap with Buddhism, this, this idea of radically accepting the present. And this book particularly talked about misfortune and the fact that misfortune in life is inevitable. So as I was reading that, I was applying it to my broken foot, you know, I was stuck in bed with crutches, feeling miserable. And then Marcus Aurelius started talking about what to do in the face of misfortune. And he recommended utterly accepting it to the point where you actually you go past accepting it. You go, fuck, yeah, like this is my reality. What are we going to do with this? And that's a very powerful mindset shift as well, because growing up, I would really freak out about things. My brain keeps going back to social anxiety. I guess that was a big thing for me growing up. But I would like catastrophize if I like messed up a social situation. I would think about it all day, the next day, the next week, the next time I saw that person, I would feel like I was, you know, this socially anxious person and I was never going to be, you know, cool at parties or whatever. So you take that example, the, the being socially anxious at a party or whatever, and then you take the broken foot and the advice of Marcus Aurelius and the Stoic philosophy would be just radically accept how you are, what happened, because you can't control the past. You can't control the misfortune that happened and misfortune is inevitable. So you might as well like prepare your mind for it. And Ah, man, I got to say, I feel like this book was given to me for a reason. And I feel that way about a lot of these books, like they seem to have fallen into my life at just the right time. Accessing that mindset and, and really resonating with it helped me be like, okay, my foot's broken. Let's appreciate this. So instead of wallowing in my inability to skate, I shifted focus and really focused on socializing. When I got my walking boot, taking slow walks, appreciating the mobility I did have, tried to learn the guitar, you know, worked on myself, continued continued to journal, explore myself. I was introspective. I read. Having that mindset of radically accepting the present, even in misfortune, allowed me to turn the injury into a really positive experience. And I actually, through those eight weeks, learned that I don't need skateboarding to have a happy and fulfilling life. Because when all is said and done, I had a really good eight weeks. I had a fulfilling eight weeks. I learned, I experienced, I socialized, I loved. So it, it actually helped set me free of one of my attachments, which was this idea that I needed skateboarding to be happy and fulfilled. And that's a, that's another thing kind of on that, on that more Buddhist, mindful, Zen path that I've been taking is that like, it's great to have passions and to love things and to love people. But those attachments, when you're too attached, can cause suffering. You can, you can actually strive strangle the joy out of them. You know, a lot of these things we're attached to, they eventually are going to naturally change and, and move on, etc. So yeah, first stoicism book really gave me an important perspective. Okay, next book is The Dharma Bums by Jack Kerouac. This is the only like novel-ish book on the list, although it is technically nonfiction. Jack Kerouac writes about his own life in a stream of consciousness format. And I can't remember the timeline exactly if I read this before why Buddhism is true, but this is another book that really turned me on to the ideas of Buddhism and meditation. Because I was experiencing anxiety in my life and I was starting to seek solutions to my internal problems, um, the ideas of meditation and Buddhism were coming up. But I had this internalized story that meditation could not coincide with a fun and fulfilling life. I thought being a meditator meant you were boring, secluded, quiet. This book by Jack Kerouac showed me that the opposite could be true. This guy lives a party lifestyle, a free, expansive, traveling man of nature filled with friendships, 
just a really fun and exciting lifestyle. And meanwhile, him and all of his friends are seeking enlightenment through meditation and Buddhism. It's such a fun read. And as I was reading it, I was like, okay, shit, like I can... I can have this really fun and, and free and expansive New York City lifestyle that I really want. And I can seek the solutions to my anxiety through meditation. So that's why the Dharma Bums is on my essential reading list because of that role that it played in my dropping my skepticism about meditation and opening myself up to try it. It's also just a really, really fun book. My favorite Jack Kerouac book and I definitely recommend it. Here's another one that came up on my journey with meditation. This is The Universe Has Your Back by Gabrielle Bernstein. This one is also kind of about meditation, spirituality. You know, as I started accepting meditation as a means to enhance my life and solve my inner anxiety, I started to become a little bit spiritual. I started to believe in ideas like manifestation and trusting the universe. And, you know, I had all these these problems I I was so uh, I was so attached to these stories in my head. It was like I have these problems. Like these are my things. Like this is these are truths about me that I have these problems and I don't know how to get over them. The universe has your back. Helped me kind of further accept the problems I was having, and the acceptance allowed me to calm down. And the idea of putting my trust in the universe that things unfold in the way they're supposed to it relieves so much of the pressure and the grasp that i and the grasp that i had on these problems i was trying to solve that it all the the whole system just calmed down you know i started meditating on my anxieties and they started being less of a thing over time I never would have said I was a spiritual person as of three, four years ago. Maybe that's when it just started. Maybe that's when the seeds were planted in my brain. But now, and, and thanks to the trajectory that this book helped put me on, I genuinely believe that things happen how they're supposed to. I kind of, in my mind, I see this grand image of like the Big Bang happened to start the universe and it's just unfolding and unfolding and eventually I became a part of it and it's still unfolding and changing in this massive incomprehensible way and this trust in the universe and just choosing to believe that things are going to work out it takes the personal pressure off of things which paradoxically helps them solve let me try to rephrase that Trusting in the universe allows you to calm down as you try to solve your problems and that calmness makes it more likely that you will solve your problems because you're not you're not so desperate. The desperation is what creates even more anxiety and puts you into loops. But being calm, having faith, trusting, believing, it brings on a peace, a joy that you can feel inside in your body. I feel it right now as I'm describing it that I had never known before, you know? And it's just fun. It's fun to believe in the universe. It's fun to, when you're out for a walk and you see something and you think that it's a sign that you should make this decision, it's fun. It makes life a little bit more fun and playful and there ain't nothing wrong with that, nothing at all. In fact, I highly recommend it. So yeah, the universe has your back. Really good, it's got, you know, I can't remember it too well. I think it's got some like specific guided meditations, tips on meditating, and also just, you know, speaks to the idea of trusting the universe. It helped me drop a lot of the negative stories that I was holding on about myself and just, you know, accept the present here and now and really help me kind of help me heal in a way. Next book I want to bring up is Attached. I want to shout out the Tinder date that recommended this one to me. It's really stuck with me. So so I, I'm also a guy where the relationships in my life tend to be the most significant part of my life, whether that be lovers, friends, family, and in between, like, and my relationship with myself, like, that's that's such a important part of my life. And I always end up discovering flaws about myself through relationship. I also discover good things about myself through relationship and relationships can be so beautiful and fulfilling and I love love. But I think for most of my life growing up until college and maybe just a little bit after, I would just get into relationships and I wasn't really conscious of what was happening. I would just get into them because they felt good and I would do the thing and that's all good. But and I think what is really common for a lot of human beings is we have a lot of like unconscious habits and patterns that are not necessarily helpful for cultivating relationships. I speak a lot about attachment. I think it's really kind of naturally ingrained in us to like really attach ourselves to our relationships. I think I naturally had some codependent tendencies. And 
I wasn't aware of any of these things. And I think I did things that were not too healthy for my relationships that I was completely unaware of. Just like how Why Buddhism is True was the first book that made me kind of conscious of my anxiety. Attached was the first book that kind of made me conscious of my relationships. It gave me this structure to when I'm on like a date or getting to know someone or even deep in a relationship to be like, okay, take myself out for a second. Like what's going on here? Like what, what am I doing? What is she doing? What What's going on here? Is this healthy? Starting to identify habits and things that can be improved upon. And yeah, basically this one, if you've ever heard people talk about like anxious attachment, secure attachment, and avoidant attachment, this book argues that those are like the three main ways in which people attach themselves to the other in a relationship. I, I believe it. You know, when I was reading this book, I like looked back on all my past relationships and I identified how I was attached, how my partner was attached, and it was really insightful. And yeah, for, it for the first time gave me like a consciousness and awareness of how I was acting in a relationship and maybe why the other person acted the way they did in a relationship. So, you know, this book, and I've got a long way to go for, for like figuring out how to be in relationships to the best that I can. I've definitely got a long way to go, probably more books to read. But this book kicked off that like that ability to really communicate and think through my habits and and yeah, and do that instead of just kind of automatically acting on my habits and patterns and getting into relationships and being in relationships with, without really thinking or awareness. So very important book. All right, here's another essential book for me. This one I was so embarrassed as I was reading it that I took off like the hardcover sleeve and I even duct taped the side. Later on, I ended up cutting out a piece of the hardcover and, and taping it back on because, you know, I'm learning how to accept myself and not, and I'm realizing that being embarrassed about the things that have helped me or the things that I like or being embarrassed about who I am more generally is just, it's not worth it. I'm getting better at accepting myself. This is No More Mr. Nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. And so for some context, I've always been a people pleaser across the board, but especially in loving relationships. I felt like it was my job to make the other person happy, to fulfill their needs. And I, I see that very clearly now, thanks to the help of this book. But at the time, I didn't like I said, I was unaware. I was unconscious of it. I was just giving, 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 giving. And I did not know how to leave room for myself. I did not know how to ask for what I wanted. And it was not good. I was a people pleaser. It's really bad. I didn't know how to stand up for myself. I picked this book up when I started realizing there was a problem. I had the nice guy syndrome. I really thought that that's what I was supposed to be in this world. Like that's how people are going to like me and and that's how people are going to think I'm a good person. This book helped me realize that that's, that's no good way to live. Like you gotta, I was so scared of being selfish, but thanks to this book, I now understand that you, you gotta be a little bit selfish in this life. And I don't mean you gotta be an asshole to people, but I mean, particularly when you're getting into a relationship with someone, like you don't want to pretend you like all the things they like. You don't want to pretend, you don't want to make compromises that you actually don't believe in like you have to stick up for like it's very important to ask yourself who you are what you want and you gotta stick up for yourself hold those boundaries firm like you can't you can't just cave just because just because it's more likely to make a relationship form you know and just because it's going to please the other person it doesn't last in the long run because you start to lose yourself that goes along with the uh the codependent habits that I grew up with, you know, I didn't know how to maintain my own life, my own friendships within a relationship. And this book helped me start standing up for myself. You know, again, I'm far from perfect when it comes to being in relationships. But like, now I know how to assert myself I communicate my needs better. See, I'm like scared I'm gonna get canceled for this. But like, I've talked to women. And when I said like, it's not good to be a simp, they'll they're like shocked, you know, that I would say something like that. But now it's like, I own that shit, you know, you can't be a simp. To me, a simp is like suppressing your needs and putting someone else on a pedestal and like doing everything you can to please them. But the problem with that is you lose yourself. And then it's no relationship. It's just a it's just a toxic. It ain't it. It ain't it. No more Mr. Nice Guy really helped me out, really helped me understand why some of my past relationships didn't work out. Potentially has some like patriarchal language in there, but I don't know. It was important for me. You gotta, you gotta, it's almost similar to the artist's way in that I learned to trust what I want out of my creative career. This book helped me trust what I want out of life and relationships and 
helped me realize that I, I'm allowed to hold firm on what I want. All right, here's one actually about productivity. This is Deep Work by Cal Newport. As a self-employed person, I, I often used to feel like I need to, you know, figure out my systems to keep myself productive since I'm not going to have a boss and a structure. Like I need to, I got to figure this shit out, how to actually be productive. This has been my favorite take on productivity to this point. It advocates getting the fuck off your phone, not checking your email as much. It advocates a really healthy work-life balance. And probably the thing that has stuck with me the most is it advocates four hours per workday maximum of intensely focused efforts. So for me, that's usually creative efforts like writing, shooting video, or editing. With the framework of this book, I try to put in those hours during my workday, and then the pressure's off, you know? There's nothing more I could do, you know? I try my best, and then I allow myself to, you know, do some shallow work, do some fun shit on TikTok, or, or just do something else, stop working, go live my personal life or something. When I was in college, it was like everyone was like, constantly feeling like they always need to be working they were glorifying you know all-nighters especially on finals week like this glorification of just like absolutely fucking obliterating yourself not sleeping not eating for the sake of of your work and productivity and i was a part of that too and it's just now it's just eh. like it doesn't got to be that way and yet this book gets into the weeds of like how can you be productive in this way and how do you how do you get your four hours of deep work in and why is that better than you know, checking your email every five minutes. Really the, the best book on productivity I've read. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it actually for self-employed and employed people because yeah, it will, it will probably make you more productive. And, but the, I think the main benefit is the peace of mind about your productivity. Like you do what you can and then the framework in this book helps you accept that you've done your best and then lets you have more peace and calm and and fulfillment outside of that work as well just one or two more here not much to say about this one this is the simple path to wealth by jl collins simply put this book is everything you need to know about saving money and investing once i read this book i started saving money investing it prior to this book that whole world was very very intimidating to me i had no idea what to do i did not learn it in school this book all you need to start investing in a way that does not consume your brain. It's very, it's passive. I like, I do this shit for like five minutes a month and that's it and I don't look at it. And then you set yourself up for like, you start building towards financial freedom and retirement and you know, important shit like that. Yeah, if you're becoming an adult or if you're an adult and you're not investing or you're confused about it, Simple Path to Wealth will put your head there. And then the last book, I, I think I want to shout out How to Change Your Mind by Michael Pollan. It's a, it's a really beautiful book about psychedelic mushrooms, but I want to say the reason it's on my life-changing book list is because it's the book that gave me the courage to try psychedelics, and then the psychedelics then, you know, really changed my life, brought in my perspective, continued to aid me on my journey to, I guess, enlightenment, self-growth, my journey to knowing myself and being happy because of it. And yeah, that's those are the books that have really changed my perspective in a dramatic way in my life thus far. And I'm very grateful for all these books and the lessons they've taught me. They are very much ingrained. Hopefully some of these books will help you on your journey. Before I sign off, I do want to shout out my Patreon. This is a new way I'm trying to fund my creativity. So I don't need to focus on algorithms, which are really toxic to my creative freedom and my mental health. Patreon.com slash George Poulos. And another way you could support is all the books will be affiliate link down below. I'll get like, I don't know, 10 cents <laughs> if you buy a book with that link. But you know what you could do? You could click my link for the book and then cop a microwave it will i think i get a cut from your whole cart on amazon after you click one of those so i don't know help your boy out my adsense is tanking on my main channel i'm not really panicking yet because i sold my car but you know i gotta figure this shit out so thanks for the support <laughs> leave video requests down below i'd love to uh, i don't know talk about stuff give advice go deeper into a book or something let me know let me know what you think i should talk about